With the internet out, it's hard to know what's really going on in Kazakhstan's largest city, Almaty. But the limited images, including of government buildings gutted and on fire, are grim. That's a protester's body lying in the street. Security forces fired automatic weapons with live ammunition. And the fear is civilian casualties could be very high. <gasps> Kazakhs overseas who have relatives in the thick of it are fearful. Of course, it's a very worrying situation on a personal level, but then on the other hand, I'm also very worried about our sovereignty and, uh, you know, in general about the political situation. President Kasim Jomart Takayev called the protesters terrorists, but it appears many initially came out in anger over high gas prices. We're not terrorists. We participate in rallies, she said. Nonetheless, that's a justification the government used to summon Russian, Belarusian and other soldiers who began flying in today. The Tukayev administration couldn't necessarily rely 100% on the security services and needed the support of the Russians to prop up the backbone of the Kazakhstani security services. Kazakhstan is as big as Western Europe and is rich in minerals and oil. But increasingly, there have been signs its population is tiring of authoritarian rulers. This human rights worker says bringing in so-called peacekeepers from the outside, though, is worrisome. We've seen an absolute crackdown against civil society in both Belarus and, and Russia, really unprecedented. And I fear um, that uh, such a scenario might, might be in store uh, for, for Kazakhstan. Of late, propping up aging authoritarian rulers along his borders has become busy work for Russia's Vladimir Putin. He provided security forces and a political lifeline to Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus, and now it's Kazakhstan's leader that's pleading for help. Chris Brown, CBC News, London.